and come in. Okay, so um, yeah, a day in a day in my life and my spiritual practice. I I have a quite a. There are certain things that I've been doing for many many years without interruption, uh, and it's more or less been without fail. So I wake up and I immediately get on my knees. On I go go on the bed and I get on my knees and I do um, I do the Lord's prayer. Um, then I do a, a quick visualization on health. Um, then I do my 12-step prayers. Uh, there is a, a step three and a step six 12-step prayer, which comes from the big book of AA, which I do on my knees. Um, then um, after that, I put a huge bunch of people who I either love or have problems with into God's infinite light and love and pray for miracles and transcendence. And I have. People I love, I put them in, and they're also my list of people I'm having uh, conflict with. I put them into God's infinite light and love and pray for miracles and transcendence around them. I'll even put things which are not people, like the B&B &B and leaks and things, into God's infinite light and love. All things which are creating, um, you know, sort of patches of um, uh, limited thinking in my consciousness into God's infinite life. So I'll do that and I'll have a huge list of things which I'm just putting in there. After that, on my knees, um, what, what do I do? So I, I'm in food recovery. I'll just give thanks for my food and ask for an abstinent day uh, around my food. Uh, and then after that, on my knees is... Um, ah, yes, I have this thing. I haven't even shared it before. I connect, I, I connect to, to... I don't normally share it. I connect to some of the most uh, profound mystical experiences I've had and also what some of the things that I'm most grateful for, which for me reflect the love of divinity that I've experienced. Um, so the, 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 uh, the first one uh, was I got to meet Dr. David R. Hawkins in Sedona and I was one of the first people to ask him a question and uh, I, I was quite early on, I was in early uh, my early days of uh, spirituality, but I knew I had to meet him. And he looked into my eyes, and I, and I looked back, and it was like, it was one of the most profound spiritual experiences, I, I think, probably the most profound spiritual experience, because I was like transported, and the power of his, of his gaze was transported. It's like having a shot of enlightenment, you know, so much power radiated through his gaze. And so I just, I, just, I just link in to that power that was transmitted to me when I got to meet Dr. David R. Hawkins, which for me was probably, you know, he's at the level of an avatar, a very, very rare level of high level of consciousness. So I, that's my, my first one. The second was I, I met a teacher of enlightenment, um, and uh, he was talking to me about the observer. And I went into, uh, I had my white light spiritual experience where you know, the whole world disappeared in white light. There was infinite light, love and power beyond all imagining. Uh, the Course in Miracles, when I read The Course in Miracles and it said, like imagine the happiest moment you've experienced in this world and times it by a thousand and then times it by a thousand again and you'll have a glimpse of, of what it's like. And that, when I read that in The Course in Miracles, it's like everyone who's living in this world has no imagining of the immense power and light of, of, of God consciousness. It's, it's, it's beyond this world by a factor of a thousand and a thousand times long. And I knew that, and I know when I read that, it just like, this world is like a, sh a veil of darkness compared to what it would be like to be in the stream of God. And then when I came out of that, I was in a state of infinite bliss and ecstasy, pure witnessing and oneness. So I also just quickly link into that experience as well. So that's my second thing. And the third thing, which is different to that, which was um, the experience, I wrote about it in my book, Bulletproof Peace, uh, gradually. It was like, but not in detail, because I wrote it in my book, and I wrote so much about it, and then my editor said, like, it's too long and boring. So he just said, like, make it really, really short and concise. So otherwise I wrote a huge sort of volume on my kidney failure and my transplant, because it was like, when I had my transplant, I had so many miracles, you know. It was like I was called up, I was called up and said, when they call you up on your a transplant list, they call two people up at the same time. And it's like a competition. It's like who's going to do, they give you a number of tests to see who deserves the kidney more. And I was in with this other Indian chap. 
you know, and it's like they're giving us all these tests and it's like one of you is going to get the kidney and one of you is going to be told to get home. I go, so it's like lottery. It's like first you get the call and then you've got two people competing for that kidney and then you've got like all the things for rejection. Like they can put it in and it can still not go. So you've got to go through like a, a, a hundreds of hoops. It's like winning the lottery and you've got to win each gate. It has to go perfectly for it to be successful. And what I, what I experienced was like, it was like the heavens parted. It was like God was sort of saying, like, this kidney is coming your way to give you life. And, it was, and I knew it was God's grace, it was the touch of God, that everything went perfectly. And, and, and even the doctors were amazed at how well it's done. And it's still, even the doctors have said things like, you know, um, it, stayed, you know uh, it's, it's, it stayed really, really well, you know, and so it's about 10 years now. So that was the miraculous. So I, I give gratitude to Grace for actually having given me life and being in a place from near death. So I link into those three things. I haven't really shared that with anyone before. Uh, so that's my morning. That's, the, that's my knees just in the morning. Then I, I sit down and I do my Course in Miracles. I religiously do my Course in Miracles lesson every morning. So I read my Course lesson for the day and then I'll have 10 minutes of... In the, in the, in the early days I used to do an hour hour in the morning, now it's down to 10 minutes, but 10 minutes, and it's a combination of feel the feelings and observer, because I intuitively mix, mix them depending on what I need. Um, so I'll either, if, I, if there's some feelings, I'll feel them out, and then I'll be in the observing, and I'll be interchanging that for 10 minutes. Just, it's like a detox. If there's anything in the morning, a little bit of fog or a little bit of a sore throat, I'll just take that out and go to the observer and just clear it out so that I feel clean of any sort of um, separated identity. Um, uh, so that's, uh, so that's, that's, the, that's like my fix, like I have to do that. It doesn't really matter if I'm gonna be late or whatever. Mm. That's like my God comes first, because I know when I tune in and get that vibrational connection with God in the morning, you know, the, everyone knows this who's done spiritual work. When you get your morning connection going, the day will flow a hundred times better than if you just like, and I always share to, because I'm in 12-step recovery for, uh, around food, and I always say to people I help, like, what you do the first thing in the morning is reflective of who your God is. Like, if you're an overeater and the first thing you do is put a donut in your mouth, and then you pray, <laughs> it's like, like, I can tell you who your God is. Your God is a donut. It's like, donuts, I worship donuts first, and I'll get around to God a bit later on in the day, you know. Or if you check your mobile phone first, you know, it's like, well, iPhone is first and God is second, you know. So it depends what addiction you've got, whether you're opening a vodka first or a donut or, or your iPhone or checking the news. So it's like, no, it's like symbolically I must, you know, I have to get on my knees first. Even if, I, even if my ego says, like, have a donut or it doesn't say to have a donut any longer. It used to say that. So that's the thing. Um, now, recently... It seems like it's a time of great clearing for me. You know, some stuff has come up, some interesting characters that I've been in conflict with. A few difficult situations have, have arisen. So it's like there's an overdrive of um, what I do nowadays is like, whatever the problems are, I'll intuit what are the component parts of that problem. Like I might be having an issue with, in a 12-step meeting, with a personality clash with someone. So I'll put them into God's infinite light and love but I also like intuit, like what are the what are the what are the symbolic lessons that seem to be thing, like what some of the things actually I forgot I was going to do my check I'll share it now, so I've realised I'm a coward and I don't like in confrontational situations I don't like speaking up, I'd much rather like forgive you God bless you and not say anything, mm -hmm. so what's come up for me is like actually really I'm a coward, uh, so that's been coming up and I've been it's quite funny I'll share it now, so I've been putting like my cowardice my not willing to say anything in situations into God's infinite light and love. And uh, what happened was this week, after doing that, and there's this woman that intimidates me uh, in one of the 12-step meetings, and I was like, oh, I should just forgive her and just let her have her way. Um, and um, anyway, what's been coming up is there's, there's, these situations have been arising, and my mouth is opening and, like, contradicting people. And it's not me that's doing it, you know. It's like it'll suddenly, like, someone will say something, I had something where, um, in a meeting this week, and it's like, I, it's not me, but I've been putting my cowardice and my inability to stand up in situations, and I've been placing this woman 
into God. So I'll find the different components and the symbolic, you see what I'm doing? I'm seeing what seems to be the karmic lessons, lifetime after lifetime. When I'm in conflict, I won't speak up and I'll go into my coward mode. So I go, okay, it's not just the woman. Yeah, okay, it seems to be this woman I'm having conflict with and she's trying to intimidate me and get her own way in the group uh, and get me to stand down. And usually I would, or I'd cower down. But I've been putting the woman into God's infinite light and love. I'd be, but symbolically, what does that situation reflect? Because I, I probably had, you know, 10, 15 lifetimes where these patterns are now flaring up for me to transcend. So what seems to be the thing? Well, I'm a coward. What came to me is I'm a coward. You know, if, there's a, if there's a dominating character, I'll go into coward mode and I'll, I'll sort of like forgive them and pretend nothing happened. So, and also inability to st say something in, in, a, in a tense situation. So I suddenly found, so that's what I'm doing. So in all these situations, there's the person or the, or the you know, um, like in the B&B, there is, um, so what's happened is that I have so many problems with property. You know, and you can intuit, you know, one of the prayers that Hawkins said was, I pray for forgiveness for the white, you can intuit, like if people are giving you grief, you probably gave people grief in a similar fashion in this lifetime or past lifetime. So I, I do the anti-karma prayers. So this is a thing that I'm doing with the full prayer. I'm praying, not, I'm praying like, <clears throat> I wouldn't share them because it would sound like I'm bragging or it sound like I'm in trouble. But I'm probably praying about, uh, with all of these things repeatedly, I don't know, what is it, like eight, nine hours a day of prayer. I've never prayed so much, just putting things over and over again. Because the Course in Miracles says, like, each time you do it, you dissolve it. Does that make sense? Like, if you've got something really, really strong, if you put it into God's infinite light and love, and you keep doing it, you're dissolving that bond of, of dualistic darkness, if that makes sense. So if you want to get rid of it quickly, you just do it until it disappears, if that makes sense. So... So for each different event, and, it, and I can suspect that I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's destroyed other people's properties, who's taken other people's properties, who's been dishonest with other people's money around properties, because everything is going like wrong around. Every time I touch property, there's like so much bad stuff happening in every area that I'm intuiting. And everything that everyone is doing, every builder, every problem, the property, I'm intuiting like, well, what could be the karmic lesson and what have I done to others that the, all of this negativity, negativity is showing up around properties? Like some areas of my life flow and I've never had problems, but some areas like property and money is like catastrophe after catastrophe after catastrophe, after bad builder, after bad builder, after leak, after flood, after, you know, all kinds of things are happening. So, okay, so I was a cowboy builder um, I probably was a landlord, a slum landlord, that took your money and kicked you out and put someone else in there. So it's probably like grim things, you know, that I was probably getting. So you put it all in there. So you, you, you'll make, see, because if, if you see Hawkins' work, he, he described several instances where he had flashbacks to why things were happening to him in this lifetime. So you have to, you, if you don't get the flashbacks, you do past life regression, you can intuit. You know, if people are treating you in a certain way over and over again, you can intuit, no, you've been on the other side of that in a past lifetime, doing that to other poor sods. Now you're getting a chance to do karmic undoing, where other sods are giving you a taste of your own medicine. So you just pray for the uh, pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's, who's done that. So, so around property, around this lady, there can be a list of things which I'm putting into God's infinite life. And because I want these things to be cleared as quickly as possible, I'll, I'll do it, you know, I'll have a whole list. So I have a list of things to do with the conflict lady. I'll have a list of things to do with the property. I'll have a list of things to do with whatever other problem. And then I'll, I'll say, like, I'm going to do this. I might do this, like, ten times, this huge list of things ten times. And then this list on another thing ten times in the day. And I might even do it twice a day. Like, I'll do them in the morning on the lady and at the and the symbolic patterns around that, and my feelings of what happened in past life and what I've done to others. So I'll have that, and I might do it again in the evening, because I want to clear it. So a lot of stuff uh, for clearing. Um, and I go to 12-step. I do, on average, today, I mean, I've done four 12-step meetings. I'll do, on average, two 12-step meetings a day. So I've done a, a load of relationship, money, and food-type 12-step meetings today. I do that, and I, on average, I get to about 14 12-step meetings a week. 
not for the content, it's not like I, I go to a food meeting to hear something new, but for the vibration. It's like, for me, like every, every place, every group, it's not just the words, every environment has a spiritual vibration. You know, like a 12-step group has the vibration of unconditional love. Of course, in miracles or enlightenment group will have a certain vibration. A, a gangster rap music venue will also have a vibration. You know, park will tend to be neutral. You know, it'll have a, quite a neutral vibration. So, but I want the highest vibrations. So I might be in the 12-step meeting and I might be doing my prayers at the same time. You see, so I'm, I'm just using that for the energy field, not for listening in, and doing my prayers, and in the 12-step, because I'm just trying to sit in the highest vibration surroundings throughout the day as I'm doing my spiritual work. I think that's, I think I've, I've, I've said everything. Yeah, that, that's... So you that, know, you've mentioned that you are in food fellowship. So how do you, how does God tell you what to eat? You know, how do you, you know, when it comes to your food? Oh, yeah, I'll tell you about my food. Okay, so uh, the, <clears throat> the food recovery, so the thing I've done, I'm not, you know, I always say to people, and I share it uh, happily with people what I do, is my thing with food, A, everything in this, in this world is a belief system. You know, like they tell you, you have to eat this and you have to eat mm -hmm. that or you're going to die or you need this food for energy or you're going to die or if you're cold, you should eat extra food. It's like, for me, that's all crap. You know, and make sure you get your... That's all crap. You can cancel all of that because everything comes from divinity. Mm -hmm. You know, it's your connection to divinity, which is the source of life, not your belief systems of what you need around food. I'm a food addict, um, so meaning that... Um, Foods which I project magical qualities or specialness onto, I get a, I get a hit from. Uh, so remember, Ramana said, like if you, if something's imbued with magical qualities or special quali specialness, of course we call it, when you have it, you get a high. But that high is not from the thing. That high is because you think it will give you a high, if that makes sense. And then it does, stops working after a while. So no, no, no object outside of you gives you energy or high or happiness. You know, and the Course talks about this from the lesson, a person doesn't make you whole. Medicines don't heal your body. Uh, foods don't, vitamins don't, you know, it's, that's all magical. I'm not saying that you shouldn't take your vitamins or go to the doctor, it's not what I'm saying. So my thing was, because I, I, and I've essentially been in a position of neutrality around food and body for nine years. And it's just because, and all I do, which will shock people, is I have the same meal for, uh, I have two meals a day, uh, breakfast and late lunch um, and they're the same thing it's like some boiled vegetables a couple of slices of bread and some butter and some boiled chicken and I, yeah I can change it I can go out with people and have a sandwich or whatever every now and then but that's it it's just totally bore, boring and bland and it just happens there's no excitement I, I don't look forward it's not like a highlight of the day mm -hmm. where oh, you're going to have your boiled vegetables and boiled chicken and bread, you know. Like, I'm looking forward, you can't wait to get home and eat my boiled veggies. So it's like, whereas before it would be like, you know, going to the supermarket to get my bag of donuts would be something I'd be looking forward to with my, you know, it's like, that's the highlight of the day. I'm looking forward to get my bag of donuts. So that's what I do. I'm not saying that other, others, but I found with others, when they take out, strip out magical specialness, I had a lady that I helped with food, and we went round. I don't, I don't know why I'm talking about food now. So we went round to the supermarket with, to the to the sugar biscuit aisle, and she had to do like that's meaningless, and that's as meaningless as the as the table, as the tray. And I told her to have because she just wanted she just wanted to do what I want to do. So oh, fair enough, I'll tell you what I do and see how, how you get on. And then I told her to eat bland food. She said like her food tasted like cardboard. Is what she was eating. I mean, healthy meals. And within a short period of time, she had total neutrality around food and body. You know, so it does work. I'm not saying you should do that. There's two ways to transcend food. You can cancel your belief that donuts give you a high and eat the donuts so you can get into neutrality. But I, I don't want to waste time. I've got mm. bigger fish to fry. I'd much just rather eat my boiled vegetables than get to, so like everyone give me like 50 cream cakes and I can eat them and still be in a position of neutrality. That's a lot of, that's spiritual work to do that. Whereas it's not spiritual work to eat neutral foods, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, that's my day. Mm. And my food day. <laughs> okay, so 